General Nirbhay Sharma is Distinguished Fellow of the Observer Research Foundation, uh, Kawal Sibal, former Foreign Secretary. Maruf Raza is with us once again, our Strategic Affairs Analyst, Andrew K. P. Leung, takes a very pro-China view, he's an independent China specialist from Hong Kong. Thank you, Mr. Leung, for coming again on the news app. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, professor Srikanth Kondapali is Professor of Chinese Studies at JNU. My first question is to you, Professor. You know, this uh, situations uh, is not, the situation is not moving anywhere, basically because China has become extremely rigid, Professor. They say you destroy all your fortified positions, you stop all the patrolling on your side, and you stop the military infrastructure building on your side. In other words, they want us to completely reverse our strategic policy and approach towards the entire, you know, Aksai Sin Ladakh, uh, Chin uh, Ladakh region. Can we afford to do that, Professor? Well, from 19th century onwards, the uh, British Indian policy was to accommodate the Chinese in the Aksai Chin area. Uh, and although the Chinese do not have any claims to this region from that period on, they started settling down. And today, they think that they have legitimate claims over the Aksai Chin and the Western sector as a whole. Uh, so from this point of view, they have been arguing that India should back down, uh, India should not provoke, yes. India should not escalate, uh, while China will develop the infrastructure projects and other defense installations and so on. As you mentioned, uh, the, in one of the meetings between India and China in the border talks and so on, the Chinese insisted that we demolish some of the yes. bridges we constructed yeah. uh, across the Indus in Dumchile area in the western sector itself. No, but can we do that? Come on, Sibbal. Uh, three things. They say you are patrolling aggressively. Uh, I don't know. They are defining what is aggressive. But most dangerously is dismantling fortified positions. But they are saying you have no right to develop infrastructure such as road and logistics bases to the border in the Depsang area where the incursion happened. They're really setting terms, aren't they, Kaval Sibal? Well, uh, well I, I do not have uh, inform information on this uh, from any government source, but if this is what they're claiming, then obviously uh, this is a non-starter and uh, India can never agree to this and India should never agree to this because then we'll be subject to uh, pressure and blackmail constantly because then they can object to anything we do especially at a time when we want to now improve our infrastructure right across the border which we have neglected all these years we are raising additional troops we are opening new advanced landing grounds uh, we are uh, stationing our aircraft uh, our advanced aircraft in bases uh, in Assam. So all this is because of the because of the excellent infrastructure that the Chinese have built over these years yes. on their side of the border. And now they've built the railway line, which allows them to move troops very fast. Uh, and they're extending the railway line right to the Nepal border, etc., etc. So the Chinese are in no position <laughs> to ask us not to improve our infrastructure. No, but that's exactly what they're doing. That is one. The other is. No, but we don't have to accept it. We don't have to accept it. They can't dictate terms to us. But they don't and move the point out is then? That they, it is a fact that there are... Actually, that is where the concern is. Because in the past, they have come in and there have been telltale signs of their coming in, leaving cigarette packs or whatever else. But this is the first time, as I understand, where they've actually pitched, pitched a tent and, and conveyed a message to us that they're going to stay put. Now, this is really a new challenge that we are facing. And if the Chinese don't move back, then we have a real problem on the ground uh, because this will then mean that from now on, the Chinese are going to be very aggressive uh, on, on, on this issue. And all that we have been trying to do in recent years to build trust, confidence, peace and tranquility, confidence-building measures, they will begin to get eroded and will progressively go towards a situation of increasing confrontation, which will put at risk all the other positive elements in our, in our relationship with China that have happened in the recent years, including our commercial relationship. So I don't understand why China should take such a risk, be so provocative, and for what stakes? And, and this is happening after we have set up a new mechanism at their request 
at Joint Secretary level to be able to deal with these situations. And now the unfortunate thing is that the local commanders are not able to settle it. The matter has been pushed up to political level. And the Chinese now, I am afraid, will not withdraw because it will mean a loss of face for them. And therefore, they'll demand something in return, which would be unreasonable, which we will not be able to give. So we, are, so we, we must are, understand why yeah. China, China is doing I, this. There is no logic. Why China is doing this. And also our failure, our failure to pressure China to settle the border issue because we seem to be comfortable with the idea of having these constant provocations all these years and also making soft noises and positive noises how our relationship yeah, is I developing think, uh, very positively and, and actually not removing the core of the problem which is these disputed areas and which the Chinese don't want to discuss with us. You see, uh, Andrew, General, General Sharma and uh, Maruf just coming to you, I want to understand today that Andrew, yesterday you were on the program and you said, you know, this is a LAC is undefined. It's a little bit of a confusion. We come in this side, you come in that side. It's all right. And now let's resolve things. But today, Beijing is telling India how to run its internal affairs. Beijing is telling India where it wants us to develop infrastructure, roads, bridges. I mean, what is this? This is now bordering on absolute absurdity. You come in. You intrude, you get aggressive, and now you want to interfere in our, how we build our infrastructure on our side. What does China expect, Mr. Liu? Well, um, I think that, uh, first of all, uh, in answer to the question as to why China um, appeared to be so aggressive as far as the territorial claims are concerned, this um, uh, must be looked in its totality. I mean, recently, uh, China is perceiving um, that some of her uh, claims in the South China Sea are beginning in increasingly being challenged. And so there is um, an increasingly sensitive uh, as far as these uh, territorial claims are concerned. Now secondly, I agree with you, um, uh, if, if, if it's um, getting more and more uh, confrontational and more and more uh, serious, then there's a matter to be elevated to the highest level. And I think that Indians should really uh, think outside the box. Uh, rather than look at uh, the issue as a localized issue, um, that has to be discussed with the Chinese uh, at the highest level, for example, when the Prime Minister comes along, um, to look at the totality uh, of um, relations no, no, but between the totality, India and China. Mr. Liu, um, Mr. Liu, and, last and, and month, that, and Mr. Liu, what, 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 what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say, that there are more uh, areas of uh, cooperation no, no, Mr. Liu, uh, that um, right. bind the two countries together, that's all right. that there are areas that's that divide all right. the two we countries. Want to, no, no, Mr. Liu, we want to cooperate, but what is this? You know, this is completely absurd. This is... Absurd diplomacy with all respect. Last month, China moves a draft agreement with India calling for no increase in the current troop levels around the LAC in order to maintain peace. And within one month, you, continue, you, you violate land, you violate water, and you violate through the air. <coughs> Maruf, Maruf, you know, now, yep. I'm sure the government would like all focus on this issue to quickly be sidestepped can we talk about something more comfortable but the situation is very very precarious now very precarious indeed isn't it yeah or not see i'd like to first respond to the point that mr andrew Luing, Luing raised about you know india and china being in confrontation in south china sea china is laying claim on the south china sea based on its historical claims in the region which go back to bc i mean more than 2000 years Whereas the conventional laws of the seas and the international laws that now govern how nations should operate and we expect it better from China because it's a responsible member of the UN Security Council. But China actually has left a lot to be desired when it's conduct, when it talks about conduct in international relations, whether it's arming and propping up a very unreliable regime that like that in North Korea or China propping up Pakistan's entire nuclear program. But let me come specifically to this issue on the ground. The Chinese say that, you know, this is all their claim line, but what is really worrying the Chinese 
is the strategic context. India has, as been brought out by Mr. Sibyl, activated Dalit Beg, Aldi and various other airfields, which will, in the Chinese perception of things, and if you look at some of the blog sites, they refer to that, and believe me, those blog sites are not individual opinions, but they are basically supported by uh, the greater no. masterminds in Beijing, and those talk about that India could have those as launch pads into Chinese interests in Tibet. And also this particular area where they have sent troop incursions, this is not going to be the last of those because such troop incursions so are how to stall any on? further Indian aggressiveness in the Shaksgam Valley and in the Chushul area. No. So what do I suggest? I suggest two things. A. We should learn from our own experiences, not of 62, where our political leadership failed us, but of 67 in Nathula, where the commander on the spot, General Sagat Singh, and then in 86 in Sandrangchu, General Narhari, both commanders on the ground took the initiative in their hand and gave a resounding message to the Chinese, so the Chinese are we ready off. for that? I don't see any reason if political leaders here are going in circles, and we have the foreign minister here on record to say that the line of control still has to be demarcated. No, no, but why so is that? Why should why should why should, the, why should our government sound apologetic? You're right. Honor, in 1986, this is the point I I'm just making that all these great, grand, landmark visits that these governments have had with nothing. each other, they are essentially sightseeing visits. You have delegations coming in from China to visit India. You have a half an hour meeting of 45 minutes, half of which goes in interpretation. Then they're off to see the Taj Mahal. The same happens with delegations going from here to Beijing. 